Hey, I want to welcome you to our broadcast this great Sunday morning. My name is Nathan Payne. I serve here as a pastor at the Near North location. Just want to welcome all of you who are watching right now. A special welcome to those of you all who are part of our church community at the Lincoln Park location or our Near North location. Or maybe you're watching from somewhere else and maybe this is your first time with us on the broadcast. I'll just say it again. So glad you're here. Well, today's a new day. Today's a day that we're alive. And maybe you're watching with somebody right now, or maybe you're watching by yourself. I just want to remind us that today is a gift. So wherever you are, give someone a high five and say, I'm so glad you're alive. And if you're by yourself, just clap. That's a selfie high five and say, I'm glad to be alive today. And you can shoot it in the chat if you want to, just to shout it out. So glad that you're with us today. Well, I hope that as you're watching right now, that something in you is hungry for something, that you want to get something that you can't find somewhere else, that you want something to receive something that you need from God today that he has for you. And I hope you're ready to receive that. But if you're like me, probably leading up to this week, uh, leading up through the week, and maybe as you got ready for the broadcast, if you have kids, maybe you got a little impatient with your kids, or maybe throughout your work week you were impatient, or maybe you ran through a few things that you just realized that you missed the mark. And as we prepare to worship God, you're kind of thinking about that. Well, I want to challenge us and encourage us with reading some scripture together as we prepare to receive what God has for us today. It's in 1 John chapter 1. I'm going to read a couple verses. It says this, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. My little children, that's another way of saying my friends, my family, I'm writing these things to you so that you may not sin, but... If anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. Let's prepare our hearts to receive what God has for us today, knowing that whatever we bring to the table, we have an advocate with God the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous, who forgives us, who cleanses us, and then allows us then to give him the praise he deserves. So wherever you are, let's prepare to worship together. I count on one thing The same God who never fails Will not fail me now You won't fail me now In the waiting The same God who's never late Is working all things out You're working all things out Oh yes, I Stand again. 
begins Oh yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley Yes, I will bless your name Oh yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy No 
Yes, Jesus, we confess that you are enough, that you satisfy. Everything we need is in you. So we just thank you so much for the privilege to be able to sing and to declare those truths. And we, we, we look forward to what you have for us in these moments together. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Thanks for singing and worshiping with us together. I want to invite you as we prepare our hearts to receive what God has for us in just a little bit when we get to hear Pastor Trevor share God's word with us. I want us to, if you will, do me a favor and stand out of reverence for God's word. And we're going to read through the Beatitudes. You'll see it on the screen. You can read it with me. It says this, the words of Jesus. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when others revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. May God bless the reading of his word. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Park Community Church. For those of you I haven't met, my name's Trevor. I serve as one of the pastors from our near north location, Uh, but good to be with you all this morning, wherever you're coming from. I'd like to start off a little bit different this time uh, today. I'd like to start off actually by praying through just a portion of the Lord's Prayer, uh, which is a prayer that we see actually in the book of Matthew in the same section that we've been studying lately as we've been going through the Beatitudes. So uh, it's actually, it's up here now. And uh, so if you just go ahead, let's pray through this together as we get started. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, which just means would your name be holy? Would your kingdom come, the kingdom that we've been uh, learning all about as we've studied the Beatitudes, would that kingdom come and would your will be done on earth as it is in heaven? And would you give us this day our daily bread? Father, would you sustain us? These things we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, as we're getting started here, if you could do something for me, I want to know what your lunch plans are today. So go ahead, put that in the chat. If you're uh, getting takeout, wherever you're getting it from, let us know. If you're cooking something up, if you're just working leftovers, whatever it is, put in the chat uh, what your plans for lunch are today. And I'm hoping to see some good things here. I'm hoping to see some pasta, maybe some pizza. Uh, And Joe Riccardi, I'm calling you out. I want to see something good that you're having for lunch today. Okay, and and as we're seeing these things uh, come along in the chat, I hope it's stirring up a bit of an appetite for you uh, and for all of us, right? Because that's actually our subject for today. Not exactly our lunch plans, but hunger. Hunger is what we're talking about today because we're continuing our series through the Beatitudes. We're on the fourth one today, uh, which is right here. And it says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Right? And so it's a little bit different kind of hunger than what we're maybe feeling right now as we anticipate lunch. Right? It's not a hunger for lollipop chicken or BLTs or anything like that. It's a hunger and it's a thirst for righteousness. And that's what we're going to be exploring today. And as we do, uh, this is going to be kind of the, the main idea that, that's kind of something for us to hang on to as we explore this subject. It's going to be this big idea here. Blessed are those who recognize the absence of righteousness and are bothered by it. Blessed are those who recognize the absence of righteousness and are bothered by it. 
Right, that's what we're going to be exploring today. And as we do, uh, we've got a bit of a roadmap as we're going to be looking through this. We've got a table of contents, and these, gonna be, uh, these will be our two main points. We've got our need for righteousness and the satisfaction of our need. Right, we've got those two that we're working through, our need for righteousness and the satisfaction of our need. You can probably guess how those are going to work together, uh, but we'll go ahead and jump in with the first one now. So uh, our need for righteousness. And the question I want to ask right off the bat and jumping into it is, uh, is what is righteousness? Right, because the passage says that we're blessed if we hunger and thirst for righteousness, which honestly is a little bit surprising. Right? If you slow down and take into account what that's actually saying. Right, because what you would expect it to say is blessed are those who are righteous, right? Not, not those who hunger and thirst for righteous, but blessed are the righteous. Right? Because when it says blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, it's actually implying the absence of righteousness, right? That somehow ab that righteousness actually isn't there, right? Because the thing is you don't hunger for food when it's on the table, we don't feel hungry when there's food on the table, and we don't feel thirsty when water is readily available. We feel these things when they're missing. We feel these things when there's an absence. And in the same way that we need food and that we need water, we need righteousness. And so the question is, what is righteousness, right? Because it seems to be something different than what we would have guessed right off the bat. It seems to be that the righteousness that this passage is talking about is somehow different than what we might have guessed. And really, as we're going through this, I'd like to explore two different aspects of our need for righteousness as we're unpacking this and exploring what this passage is actually talking about. Two different aspects of our need for righteousness. And the first one is our need for righteousness in us. Our need for righteousness in us. It's pretty interesting when you start looking into these Beatitudes, right? We're four deep into them now. Uh, and as you start studying them, you see uh, quite a few different arguments about how they fit together, about how uh, you divide them, how you group them together, how they kind of inform one another. And as we've been studying that together, one of the things that uh, I've seen, probably the argument that's been most convincing for me, is that these first four are actually a set, right? that they're working together. And the reason that you can tell that is because of something that's happening in the original language, in the Greek. Right? There's actually alliteration that's tying these together. But in the English, we can't see that. Right? So we just miss it. But the thing is, when you look at the first four Beatitudes, these four words, blessed are the poor, blessed are those who mourn, blessed are the meek, and blessed are those who hunger, they're all starting with the same letter. Right? They're all starting with this letter right here in the Greek, which makes the P sound. Right? And remember, this is a speech. And so this is like Jesus having points and he's basically tying these together by making them all sound the same, right? by making them start with the same sound or with the same letter. And so what that means is they're meant to be understood as a set and that they're informing one another. And when we start to look at those in that way, this is what we see, right? We see the first one says, blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Right? And as Steve taught us a few weeks ago, what we see with what that means is blessed are those who recognize their spiritual bankruptcy before God. Right? Blessed are those who recognize that they don't have any spiritual merit, right? who see the flaws in, the char in their character. Right? They see the cracks in their lives. Right? And so when you take that uh, train of thought and you flow it into the next one, blessed are those who mourn, and you ask the question, why are they mourning? It's because of their spiritual bankruptcy. It's because they can see the way that they struggle with sin. They can see their imperfections. They look in the mirror and they see their shortcomings and that bothers them. Right? And so they mourn the result of that. They mourn their spiritual bankruptcy. And when you take those in connection, what you get is a picture of someone who's hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Right? Someone who is struggling with sin and is desperate to be rid of it. Someone who just wants to live in a way that's honoring to God, but they're struggling to do so. Right? And they continually see these flaws in their lives and sin popping up in their hearts, and it bothers them. And that tension, right, that angst, that feeling is a hungering and a thirsting for righteousness. And honestly, I think that's a, an important thing for us to address in this season, because I think the season that we're in, right, with kind of the unique pressures that it's thrown us into, the way it's changed our normal rhythms and our, uh, what daily life looks like, I think it's a season that in a lot of ways is revealing issues in our lives that we didn't know we had. It's revealing issues in our lives 
that we didn't know we had. Right, like for example, maybe before all this happened, like you like to go out on the weekend, you like to have a couple drinks with friends maybe. Maybe you like to have a drink at night during the week and uh, you know, it was fine, it was just normal. But as the season has hit, you find yourself struggling with your emotions, struggling with sadness and with uh, anxiety and continually you find yourself turning to alcohol to find comfort. And you're starting to wonder if maybe your attachment and your relationship to alcohol is a little bit more than what it should be. Right, or maybe coming into this season, you thought that you were a strong, mature Christian, right? You're a strong follower of Christ. Your peace is secure because your peace is in God. And then everything hits the fan, right? And, and, and accounts are going crazy. And all of a sudden you start to wonder, you know, maybe my peace wasn't as secure in God as I thought it was. Maybe it was a little bit more tied up in the Dow Jones. Right? Maybe it was a little more tied up in my bank accounts than I realized. Right? Or maybe, right, maybe this season started and for the first month, right, your, your family and your kids, they're, they're just kind of driving you crazy, which honestly is natural because it's not easy. It's not easy to be together 24 seven. But as the weeks have continued to go and your anger keeps flaring up and you're having trouble getting it under control, you're starting to wonder if maybe your temper has a little bit less to do with them and a little bit more to do with you. I think in a lot of ways, what this season is doing is it's revealing the cracks in our character. It's revealing the sin in our lives and there's a tension with that, right? Because that should bother us. It doesn't feel good and it shouldn't feel good, right? And the thing is for a follower of Christ, that's not something that just goes away. It's kind of a constant of what this life is for us because we're constantly having sin be revealed in our lives. We're constantly having the surface of our hearts peeled back to reveal the presence of sin. And that's uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good to constantly see these issues rising up and to realize, and I'm a flawed person, that I'm a broken person. But the passage says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are those who recognize the absence of righteousness in us and are bothered by that. Because the thing is, if you weren't bothered by it, if you were just, if you were just cool with it, if you were just fine with it, what that means is that you're, you're okay with the presence of evil in your heart. You're okay with sin in your life. And when we find ourselves in that place, what the reality is is that you know, the, the poverty in spirit, it goes out the window right? and out with it goes the mourning and out with it goes the hungering and the thirsting for righteousness. And when those things are gone, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is gone from our lives too. It's gone because we've ceased to even desire it. Right? We've ceased to even hunger and thirst for it. And so, yeah, it doesn't always feel good. It doesn't feel good to go through life with this tension and with this struggle, but the reality is right, the blessing comes to those who live in that tension, who hunger and thirst for righteousness, even when those things don't feel good. And thankfully, the blessing doesn't just leave us there, but the promise is that there is a satisfaction, right? For they shall be satisfied. It won't always be like this. And we'll get to that and we'll talk about what the satisfaction is. But before we do, we've got to cover one other aspect of our need for righteousness, because we see that we have a need for righteousness in us, but also we have a need for righteousness around us. We have a need for righteousness in us, and we also have a need for righteousness around us. And we see that in the passage, right? As we go back to this set of four, and we look at the second one, blessed are those who mourn, that we looked at a couple weeks ago. And we see that part of that mourning is the result of, as we just said, it's the result of sin in our lives, Right, we see that and we mourn over that. That's a piece of it and it's an important piece, but it's not all of it. Right, because we also see that part of that mourning comes because we live in a broken world. Right, we live in a broken world where we experience suffering and there is mourning. And the blessing says that there is a comfort for that. Right, and then we jump into the next passage, the next verse. Blessed are the meek for they shall inherit the earth that Jackson talked about last week that he taught on. And we see that an aspect of that comfort for our mourning is actually this inheriting of the earth. Right? That, that one day, right, the day will come when the kingdom of God is fully established on the earth and citizens of the kingdom of God will inherit the entire earth. 
right? It'll cover the whole world, and there's a comfort in that. Because when we go back and we remind ourselves of who Jesus is talking to in this sermon, we remember that he's talking to a people who are living in oppression and who are living in suffering. They don't even own the land they live on. They live under the reign and the rule of the Roman Empire, and it's not a kind rule. We saw that just a couple decades prior to this, their king actually committed a genocide on them. He had their kids taken and murdered. And Jesus is saying to them that one day the kingdom of God will be fully established and it won't be like this anymore. That the kingdom of God will be here and it will cover the entire world and you won't live under the oppression of another kingdom anymore. That's what he's saying. And so when we take that in connection with our verse, right? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. We see, even looking at that word righteousness, we see that in the Bible, it's flavored with the concept of justice. And so we see that what Jesus is saying is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness around us. Blessed are those who recognize the absence of righteousness and justice in the world and are bothered by that absence. Because the truth is, We live in a world that is left incredibly wanting when it comes to justice. We live in a world where righteousness does not reign supreme. I mean, I was talking with a friend just recently uh, who's Asian American, and he lives in the city, uh, born and raised here. He's got young kids. And he was talking about how ever since this season of COVID-19 broke out, that ever since this season began with the, the blame that's been placed on the Chinese, right? And, and the racism that's resulted against Asian Americans as a result of that, that every time he even thinks about going on a walk with his kids, he starts to worry about what someone's gonna say to them as they're going down the sidewalk. He, he starts to worry about what slur someone's gonna throw at them as he's walking with his children. And he's gonna have to explain what they're saying and why they're saying it. Right, like, like somebody's going to say, go home, right, go back to China. And the thing is, this is his home. Right, he's born and raised in this country and in this city. But there's this myth of the perpetual foreigner. Right, that no matter how long an Asian American has been in this country, that they'll always really be from somewhere else. Right, that they'll always really be from somewhere else. which which kind of misses the fact entirely that the vast majority of us, if you stretch it back just a little bit, our ancestors aren't from here. They're not from this continent. And yet somehow, somehow this is home for some of us and others, those who are somehow less American, they need to leave. It's racism. It's an absence of righteousness and it should bother us. Because the language this passage is using, hungering and thirsting for righteousness, they're not pleasant things. They're not nice sensations. It's not talking about you you skip lunch and so you're a little anxious for dinner. It's talking about when you're in the desert, when you're in the wilderness and you need food and you need water. And if you don't get them, you're gonna die. It's not a pleasant thing. And that's what it means to be bothered by the absence of righteousness. I mean, we saw, we saw just a couple of weeks ago when the story broke around the death and honestly the murder of Ahmaud Arbery. I mean, to think that we live in a world where someone can go on a run and not come home and there's even the possibility that those who did it can walk away freely, that's injustice. That's an absence of righteousness and that should bother us. Because it's not like some fairy tale. This isn't like a Disney movie where he's gonna come back. He went for a run and he didn't come home. He's not ever going to come home and no amount of punishment, no amount of this world's sense of justice can ever reverse that. It can't bring him back. And the truth is, the sad truth is, his life is just one example. It's just one example that we happen to know about because a video got leaked. And the question is, how many others are there? How many others are there that we just never even heard about? It's an absence of righteousness and it should bother us because we have a need for righteousness around us. 
We have a need for righteousness in us and we have a need for righteousness around us. We need both. And to live in a world where both of them are absent, where both of them are missing, it's painful. I don't have to tell you that. It's painful. But in this passage, what Jesus is doing is he's actually addressing that pain and he's stepping into it. He's stepping into that pain specifically and he's addressing it when he says, blessed are those, blessed are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness for you shall be satisfied because there is a satisfaction. There is a satisfaction coming and it won't always feel this way. And it's with that that I wanna move into the second point, the satisfaction of our need the satisfaction of our need. Because he says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And the question is, what's the satisfaction? What is that talking about? Well, we see that this is one of the future tense blessings, right, amongst the Beatitudes. This is, uh, it's a future tense blessing. And so what that means is that we won't experience the fullness of it until tomorrow. But we've gone through a few of these now, and so when we start to add them up, this is what we see, that when the the day finally comes, when tomorrow finally comes and the kingdom of God is established in full, that the meek will inherit the earth, that that the kingdom of God will be established over the entire world, that, that the kingdom of God will belong to those who were poor in spirit and those who hungered and thirsted for righteousness in this life, they will be satisfied because there will be a reckoning. There will be a justice dealt that is full and complete and final. And every single wrong and every single injustice will be made right. And that's what we look forward to. That's what tomorrow brings. That we'll be cleansed, we'll we'll be purified and no longer will we struggle with sin in us. We won't struggle with the lack of righteousness in us. And no longer will we live in a world where there isn't righteousness around us. And that's what we look forward to. But there's also a piece of this that's important for today. There's a piece of this that matters for us today. And it's what sustains us. And it's our daily bread. Our daily bread is what sustains us. And let me, let me show you what I mean. Right? Jesus, in this passage... He's using this language of hungering and thirsting for righteousness. And that's not unintentional. These words, it's significant that he chose them. It matters that he chose hungering and thirsting specifically. And and this is what I mean by that. If you jump back a little bit in the history of the people of Israel, you see that at a certain point, they lived in bondage. They were living in captivity under another nation. They lived in bondage and under oppression in Egypt. And in their oppression, they cried out to God to deliver them. Right, to rescue them, to bring them out of Egypt. And God heard their cries. And what he did was he raised up a man named Moses and he sent Moses to the people to set them free and to bring them out of Egypt. Right, through Moses, God delivered them. And that's important because when we come to the book of Matthew, one of the things that Matthew is stressing about Jesus is that Jesus is the new Moses. Right, that as Moses was to the Israelites, Jesus is to us. And we see that all throughout the book. One of the things that happens in the story of Moses in the book of Exodus is that Moses, when he's rescuing the people out of Egypt, the first thing they do is they go through the waters. They go through the waters of the Red Sea. And then immediately afterwards, they go into the wilderness. They're in the desert where they wander for 40 years. And when we come to Matthew chapters three and four, what we see about Jesus is that he enters the waters himself as he's baptized And then immediately after he comes up out of the waters, he goes into the wilderness. He goes into the desert for 40 days. It's a parallel. It's a pattern. And the point is that Jesus is the new Moses. And it doesn't stop there. Because we see that another thing that happened with Moses is he went up on the mountain. He went up on Mount Sinai where he received the law of God. And then he came down and he gave it to the people of God. He gave it to the people of Israel. And in the same way, in this passage, what Jesus is doing is he's gone up on the mountain and he's delivering to the people this teaching, this new law to the people of God. Jesus is the new Moses. And the connections, they don't even stop there because what our passage says is blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. 
right? And when Moses was leading the people through the wilderness and through the desert, there was two things that they cried out about. There were two things that they complained in desperation over, that they didn't have food and they didn't have water. But through Moses, God provided for them. He provided water to meet their thirst. And every single day, every day, he provided bread that came down from heaven to meet them in their hunger and to sustain them in the wilderness. He gave them their daily bread. And in the same way, Jesus, who's our new Moses, he sustains us in the wilderness of this life as we walk through a world where there is no righteousness, where there is an absence of righteousness in us and an absence of righteousness around us. Jesus gives us our daily bread, which is the grace that sustains us and that enables us to keep going in this life. And it's actually our hunger and our thirst. It's the discomfort, this tension that we live in that causes us to turn to him for that grace, that causes us to turn to him to sustain us with that daily bread. Because we look at our need for righteousness in us. We see our spiritual bankruptcy and we turn to him to remind us, to remind us of the reality that when God looks at us, he doesn't see us that way. He doesn't just see our spiritual bankruptcy. He doesn't see our shortcomings and our flaws. He doesn't see our brokenness. When God looks at us, he sees the righteousness of the one who died in our place. That's what he sees. He sees the righteousness of the son that he loves. And so when we come before him as our flawed and imperfect selves, what God sees is his beloved sons and daughters. His sons and daughters that he loves, no matter what you've done. And our daily bread is the grace that reminds us of that reality every single day. And it sustains us because it reminds us that even when we've messed up, right, even when we continue to struggle with sin, God is still with us. He's still with us and he's still for us. And it's not just that. It's also when we look at the world around us and we see the absence of righteousness there. When we look out and we see a world that is riddled with injustice, it causes us to turn to him. It causes us to turn to the only place we can for hope and for healing. And we look to him and we look forward to the day when he will come back and establish his kingdom here fully once and for all. And there will be righteousness. But until that day, he sustains us. He gives us the grace we need to make it through a world where there is an absence of righteousness and there is an absence of justice. He sustains us. And so blessed are those who recognize the absence of righteousness and are bothered by it. And why? Because when we see the need for righteousness in us, And when we see our need for righteousness around us, it causes us to turn to him and to look to the only place we can for hope, to turn to the one who sustains us in the wilderness, to to turn to the one who gives us our daily bread, to turn to the one who died in our place so we could receive grace, and to turn to the one who gave his life so that one day the cause of every injustice in this world, both in people and in the systems they create, will one day be fully eradicated. And there won't be sin anymore. That's what we look forward to. That's what we anticipate. But until that day, we wander through this life just like the Israelites wandered in the desert. And we hunger and we thirst for what's missing because the the world that we live in, righteousness and justice do not reign here. And they are not in abundance. And so we hunger and we thirst. We recognize the absence of righteousness and we're bothered by it. We're bothered by it and we look forward to the day when the kingdom will come and it will satisfy that hunger. But until that day, his grace sustains us in our daily bread. And every day we work to bring the kingdom of God to bear on this world. We strive to irrigate deserts and to bring about flourishing in the midst of the wilderness. We strive with every opportunity to bring forward the righteousness of God in this world, knowing that one day it will reign supreme and there will be a justice dealt that is full and complete and final. But until that day, Jesus says, blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. And that's the promise of our Lord. 
And so today, our prayer is, Lord, would your kingdom come? Would your righteous will be done on earth as it is in heaven? And would you sustain us? Would you give us our daily bread? Let's pray together. Jesus, we thank you that you are the new Moses who you gave your life for us so that one day the cause of all injustice in this world will be fully wiped away and that one day there will be a justice brought forward that is full and complete and final. And Jesus, we look forward to that day and we thank you that as we wander through this life looking forward to that, that you sustain us every single day with your grace and with our daily bread. In Jesus' name, amen. We will feast in the house of Zion. We will sing with our hearts restored. He has done great things we will say to We will not be burned by the fire. He is the Lord our God. We are not consumed by the flood of hell protected God.
above every other name Jesus the only one who could ever save worthy of every breath we could ever breathe we live for you Father, we bless your name. We thank you for the truth of what we just sang. And now we're asking, oh God, by your Holy Spirit, you would help that to be uh, lived out in our lives, that we will build our lives on Christ alone, on his love for us 
and we would walk today in the power of the Holy Spirit. So we love you, God. Uh, We love you, Jesus Christ. We love you, Holy Spirit. So make your face shine upon us, God. Use us this day, all for your glory, O God, and our joy. And we pray this all in Christ's name, amen. Well, we wanna continue in worship and we wanna receive our tithes and our offerings. So we are just really grateful for how God continues to use this church to be a blessing to this city and to this country and to this world, that the kingdom of God cannot be contained, right? It can't be put on lockdown. So we are moving forward. The gospel is moving forward even in this season. So just want to encourage you to keep uh, being generous to the local church here at Park so that your generosity could help our fuel, to help fuel our generosity uh, to those around us. A couple of things I just want to quickly highlight. You are... Chicago Alliance is a ministry we're partnering with and they are supplying meals and clothes and kids games and stuff like that uh, to the Cabrini Green area right here on Larrabee and Oak Street. So a bunch of Cabrini Green homes here. We are uh, partnering with them and twice a week they're providing those needs that I just talked about. So you're gonna see a number on the screen that you could text to and how you can get involved, whether it be dropping off goods, or even donating uh, to this great ministry. So I wanna encourage you to do that. And then lastly, I just wanna mention uh, small groups. We're still meeting in small groups. We meet virtually every week. So small groups are uh, an incredible backbone to the life of this church. We need to be in community now and anytime. There's no, there's never a time when we could say, you know what, I'm following Jesus and I don't need community. So maybe you're watching today and you're excited to join this church, be a part of this church. You've moved to the city. You've been coming for a little bit and you're just ready for community. You don't need to wait until when we gather again. You could join community this week. So there's a a form that you're seeing that you could text to uh, that's appearing on the screen right now. I wanna encourage you to to text in to that number and then we will follow up with you either some folks from the Near North location or folks from the Lincoln Park location and get you plugged into a small group. So I wanna encourage you to do that. So we're glad you've come uh, today uh, to worship with us and be a part of this. We do pray that this broadcast will be a blessing to you and match you as always we say here every week. Why don't you pass it on to someone? Maybe there's someone in your life that you know who's opposed to coming to church, but you know what? Maybe they'll take a listen. Maybe uh, with some extra time that they have now, they wouldn't mind listening to an hour broadcast. So think about who you might be able to bless by sending this forward. So now receive this benediction and then you're dismissed. May our God and Father be your exceeding joy. May Jesus Christ, our Savior, be your unfailing hope. And may our Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit, be your unfailing comfort. Today, this season, and always. You are blessed. You are loved. Have a great day, and God be with you, and we'll see you soon.